Hey everybody, Pritch here, bringing you the fourth installment of achievements needed for your End of Dragons Legendary Precursor Voucher, Living World Season 2, Episodes 7 and 8, Return to the Seeds of Truth and Point of No Return. There are nine achievements to complete, four open world, and five story instances. I'll hit the open world achievements first. I'm grouping the first three together because they're repackaged from Set 3, Treasure Hunter Silver Waste 2, Local Response Silver Waste 2, and Revenge of the Vinewrath. Open 10 Buried Bandit Chests, complete 10 events in the Silver Waste, and kill the Vinewrath. I covered how to complete these achievements in my previous video, so check that out if you need help with these three. The link will be in the description. Please note that killing the Vinewrath is a new achievement, but was mandatory to access the Greater Nightmare Pod from the third set of achievements, because the Greater Nightmare Pod lies in the Labyrinth, and in order to gain access to the Labyrinth, you need to kill the Vinewrath, which is just the final boss at the end of the Silver Waste map meta. Fourth, reconquer the retrospective runaround. Complete the Silver Waste Jumping Puzzle. This jumping puzzle requires you to reach nine different checkpoints along the way, but thankfully you can use your mounts for this one. While the Skyscale makes this incredibly easy, I'm going to showcase this jumping puzzle with only a raptor for those below the poverty line that don't own a Skyscale. Each checkpoint will have a flag that pops out of a hole to indicate success, and you will have a buff indicating how many checkpoints you've passed. Now sit back, chill, and enjoy me yelling directions at you for five minutes in double speed. All right, hop up onto the rock, go to the left, and then cut through the little passage right here in between the rocks to your first little uh, speed boost here. Jump up onto the rocks. We want to get height here, all right? And then once you get over here, jump to the left. Climb up the left side of the little rocks over here, jump to the right, get checkpoint number two, and then just keep hopping on top of the rocks until you make it to the top over here to the speed boost. Then make your way up slowly because sp pressing spacebar is rough, and then make your way up onto the rock. Uno reverse card here, Uno reverse card again. Keep climbing up the rock face here. We're going all the way to the top, so just keep jumping and climbing up here. Go to the left once you make it to this side, and then just keep climbing up the face of the rock over here. Nothing much going on. Look at the god rays, pretty, shiny, we love it. It looks cool and instantly we start hating it because we can't see anything and now we hate god rays all right make your way to the top turn around and then climb up to the uh, back side here until you find the bridge go across the bridge for checkpoint number three once you make checkpoint number three stay on the right side and hug the right side here and keep going over we see a shiny chest we want it so we jump down and we get it all right and then keep jumping through the hole over here uh, to the next speed boost the velocity elixir and all this is is literally keep pressing spacebar just keep jumping across all these pillars keep jumping eventually go to the rock and then keep jumping across all the pillars make it to the end and get to checkpoint number four right here and then it's going to be another giant climb up of the uh, up the rocks here you're going to be going in like a circular pattern essentially um, so just keep climbing up the face of the rocks as best you can keep mashing spacebar uh, and eventually you're going to wind up hitting it and going all the way to the top all right, now once we make it to the top here, we're going to go to the left. We don't need this speed boost. We're just being dumb. Uh, keep going to the left, hop down over here, and then you're going to see a little hole in the in the rocks here. You're going to climb down the hole, and now for the rest of the time, we're going to be climbing downwards. So find the little hole, checkpoint number five. We nailed it. All right, and then keep jumping down. If you have gliding, you can just easily glide your way down. It's not a big deal. There's a uh, grand chest that you can spot in the little nook over here. You can grab that if you would like. Uh, but basically, you just keep jumping down, all right? Uh, until you make it to the velocity elixir then hug the wall here and keep running along the path you can keep going down in a normal way or you can just jump off and glide whatever you guys want to do uh, until you make it to the elixir checkpoint number six boom we hit it um, now i'm going to double back here for no reason in particular just because i'm being dumb uh, and then you're going to want to keep going forward here towards the right and keep uh, keep going, and then you're going to turn over here and go to the right once you've made it to the edge over here, and you're going to go across these rocks over here. Um, I, I keep looking back for no reason. There's no reason to do that. Just keep going along until you see the Velocity Elixir, checkpoint 7. Boom, we nailed it. We stay here for a while. We double back for some reason again because we're stupid. Uh, don't worry about that. And get the resplendid, or get the splendid chest. All right, once we're here, we're going to go to the left and jump down to where you see that little rock over there. All right, we do a bunch of 360s, hit checkpoint 8, and then that is the last checkpoint we're going to hit for a really long time. All right, now you're going to hug the rocks to the right here and keep going along the side. Don't worry too much um, if you're not in like super, super high, but just keep making your way up and climbing till you get to the top here. And then we're going to struggle really badly. Quick cut over. Nobody noticed that it's a different frame now. All right. And keep climbing your way over to the right and keep going towards the right. All right. Even when we get to the velocity elixir, we're still going to the right. 
All right. We're going to eventually make our way to a scrit tunnel. Stay right here in this medium little spot. And then eventually you're going to jump down and just follow this sand path right here. You can walk this path. You don't have to glide it. Um, but eventually we're going to make our way to the scrit hole. All right. This is where things get rough and not fun. Scrit hole time. Scrit hole one. Go up to the ramps here to the left and glide on over. And then jump down to the right in the bottom right. There's a scrit hole. Go in it. All right, scrit hole number two. Glow up the uh, the ramps right here. Stay on the on the path, and then you're gonna go to the right over here in the bottom right corner. There's going to be a scrit hole for two. All right, scrit hole three. Run over here. Get on the planks. Turn to the right and grab it. Boom. Scrit hole four. Climb up the cliffs here. Uh, climb up, 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 and then keep going, keep going. Turn around. Climb up even higher. All right, and then once we make it to the top, there's a scrit hole at the end. Scrit hole number five. All right, go across the wood here. And once we make it to the other side, we're going to take the script hole directly in front of us. Script hole number six. Keep climbing over here to the right and keep climbing through the path. Sorry that the angle is a little awkward for me. And keep climbing over to the right again. Keep going, keep going. And then eventually fall down, go into the dark hole here and grab script hole number six. All right, it's so number seven. We come down the ramp now and we're going down and it's directly in front of us. There's nothing new. All right, script hole number eight directly to our left. Nice and easy, simple. Boom, boom. Script hole number nine. Let's go. So don't take the script hole directly in front of you. Keep climbing up and up and up. And then once you get over here, you're going to keep climbing over to the right. Take the, uh, take the ramps if you'd like. Or you can drop down to the bottom level. Either way, you're going to drop down here and take the one on the right. All right, script hole number 10, the final one. We're almost done. All right, right underneath the ramp right here. Boom. So last script hole. We're done now with script holes. Keep climbing up and up and up the rocks. All right, just keep climbing up the left side of the face of the whole little rock cavern thing here. All right, until you make it to the very end, the very last checkpoint, checkpoint number nine. All right, just keep climbing up the face of the side here until you get there. And boom, we have now made it. Checkpoint number nine. You are done with the jumping puzzle aspect of this whole thing. Now, all you have to do is go get the magnificent chest. In order to get the chest, you need to go talk to the or go interact with the rumble. There's three stacks of rumble. Each one gives you one key fragment. And once you get all three, you can go back to the chest, unlock the chest. It's going to spawn an ad for you to kill essentially kill the script burglar and once the burglar is dead you get your prizes and your rewards and the end you have completed the jumping puzzle congratulations fifth return to meeting the asura load into metrica province and enter the story instance activate the challenge mode because bald rats don't scare you and then go plant your seed to the left of the stairs listen to a tree's complain about not being perfect and then teleport around in a game breaking fashion until you fight and kill two guards then go walk behind the next guard and assassinate him then press the wall panel to advance to the first room and now it's time for the mechanics part of this mission you'll be invisible the whole time and there'll be guards with cones of vision you can walk in these cones and be fine but the moment you press f to assassinate a guard or interact with Panels, you're going to get revealed if a guard's cone is facing you while you press F everyone will get alerted and tries to kill you and then you have to fight them bet your chat that you can easily do this mission in full stealth and never get revealed once because you're cocky for room one just murder the rats on the right side and press the panel the guy in the middle can't be killed and doesn't get spooked when the door he's staring at just randomly opens up room two introduces the final mechanic the red circle of death just don't stand in it. There are two panels on the side that have to be pressed in quick succession. When you activate one, the golem goes to it and then turns it off. So wait for the golem to be far away, then activate both before the golem can turn off the first one that you select. Room three has a cutscene showing Mushroom Head, and then it's double the mechanics. Start with dispatching the guards, and then no freaking way I was in that circle. Hold up, hold the phone, hold the phone. Can we get an instant replay here? It's right here when you see the instant replay. No shot I'm in that circle. That is, that is not right. It ain't right. It isn't right. That is wrong. Okay, deep breath. Room number three. Take out the guards, then interact with the panel, then use your seventh ability to gap close to the other side, then press the panel, then go back to the first side and press it again before the robot can make it to the button number two. Now it's boss fight time. Stay stealth and take out all these shield generators without getting caught. Then assassinate them to 50% health and then do it all over again, but this time, do it with red circle robots. You now have to press the panels to draw the robots to the panels, then take out the generators that they were guarding, even though the rats are still staring at the shield generators for an eternity. Then ArenaNet decides to just say, Screw the rules, I have money. And you get caught on a panel while doing the mechanics right. 
Give up on stealth completely and slaughter everything using all your abilities, but most notably, go invisible with your elite and then press 5 to whirl around while invisible to do massive damage without taking aggro because you can stand close to a red circle and pull aggro, and you can touch a panel while no one's looking and pull aggro, but when you stand on the ad's faces and whirl around and twirl them to death, then they could care less. Totally not salty at all. Once you've pulled aggro, you can just go kill the boss with your abilities and go spin him to death and the end. Sixth, return to no refuge. Head to the Silver Waste and load into the story instance. Activate the challenge mode because even though horsemen and beasts terrify you, your wife is watching. You need to act really tough. Head south and then begin the memory, which forces you to play a thief again. Blow through dialogue, then conveniently walk away while Fallon murders a horseman beast. Then it's fight time. I'd tell you what your skills and abilities do, but let's face it, you're just gonna mash your face on the keyboard anyways, so why bother? Just know that you can hit stuff while you're in your elite stealth and it won't reveal you, so I recommend using your fifth ability with it. Once you can leave, ignore all the centaurs and run to the boss fight. Here, you need to kill earth elementals to make windmen vulnerable and then slap them around a little bit. While you're doing this, he will auto-attack you. There will be sand pit traps that you can't stand in that will appear as dusty sand. And finally, there will be lines of dusty sand that move that need to be dodged or avoided. Eventually, he spawns two earth elementals, then three, but it's all the same. Just kill them and then kill Windmane until he drops dead. The end. Seventh, return to Arcana Obscura. Travel to the Derman Priory in Lonar's Pass and load it into the story instance. Eat a bloodstone pot pie because when someone offers you food, it's impolite not to eat it. Then take the Harry Potter ripoff fireplace and talk to Ogden. Lip sync a new song you like. Provide help when I can. Otherwise, I'll remain here. Quietly judging your progress from afar. Then travel up top for the Fire of God's book located behind the southwest bookshelf. Then go find three relics. In the basement, it's the faded map on the east side. On the west side, it's the journal of Lord Volador on top of the bookshelf. And on the south side, it's the Elonian basket farther south. Bring these to Ogden to summon a ghost that you will follow around everywhere while killing ads the whole time. Eventually, you have to go gather three vision crystals hidden behind some ads and you just bring them back. Then watch the ghost get bugged because he's animation locked and pulls up your inventory stat every time you try and talk to him. Eventually, grab the torch and head to the basement to finish dialogue with Ogden. Interact with the mirror to get beaten up by yourself if you want the achievement and a free hair changing kit and the end. Eighth, return to Pact Assaulted. Return to the Silver Waste and load into the story instance. Head southwest and kill plants, then head northwest and kill plants, then kill plants with swords over their heads, then kill vine chamber plants, then kill more plants, then get a signal flare and bring it to a bonfire with under 200 HP, and light the fire and the end. Ninth, return to the mystery cave. Head to the silver waste and load into the story instance. Interact with the wall using the holy torch. Oh! Then interact two more times while the ads try to kill you. Head inside and follow rocks around until you come to an awesome looking cave opening. Head to the sleeping sack located in the southwest corner to plant your seed. Then watch Kaith kill Wind because reasons. Come out and it's boss fight time because the shadow dragon is back for round two, baby. First, kill three vines. Then avoid yellow circles and avoid red circles and avoid plant bombs and avoid dusty spots while rocks shoot up while taking holy fire to cogs and interacting for five hours. But don't worry, Brom gives you a bubble while you channel. Does it block anything? Huh! No. What the frick is the bubble for then? See, Brom's really trying to help, but, well, he's special. The bubble at least gives you stability and protection though, so you won't get interrupted. Once the ring of fire is lit, whack away at the dragon's head in the middle until you get it to 50% health, then do it all over again with one twist. Smoldering shadows will spawn in the middle and try and smother out the flames that you create and just one tap them and continue on. Create the ring of fire, then slaughter the dragon, then run over to it and FINISH HIM! The end. Tenth, like and subscribe. Search for both the like and subscribe buttons on this video's YouTube page and left click. Once you've completed all ten achievements, congratulations. You've completed the fourth set of achievements needed for your End of Dragons legendary precursor. Great job and I'll catch you guys in the next one.